Hi guys and welcome to another Train Sim 2021 video. Today we're going to do a scenario that's out for the um, AP350 by Mr. Dreamliner, so that's the one you'll see in the title in the description, all of that jazz. But also this is going to talk quickly about the amount of Armstrong Powerhouse packs that have recently been updated with new features. Uh, so let's get going and we'll go into the rest of those things. Uh, right, let's get unpaused. We are in AC mode, that's fine. Let's get you on, you into neutral. Cancel you. WS and AWS operational. Let's turn my volume up on my end so I can hear properly. Right, so one of the things that's been updated in this pack especially is that we can now click the buttons to, so instead of pressing control one, we can now click through all of these different systems. So we can look at the lighting system and all of that, exterior lighting, interior lighting, blah, 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 blah. Press zero to go back to the top. We just need to acknowledge the config now. So we've now got a touchable TMS. And now we've got the tick and we're happy. So that's a much nicer little immersion feature. Like that, like that. Next thing we have is working GSMR. Let me get my doors open while we're waiting here. So registration code, we are two kilo two one. So two kilo two one. And we are at signal, God, it's busy. No idea, we can't read it from there. 117. Knowing this being a Miss Dreamliner scenario and it being a Josh scenario, it will probably have that in there. Oh, actually, it might not, because I don't know if this pack was updated before he released it. Right, we're going to Watford Junction so we can also... Um, I wouldn't actually... Would this just be to Watford? No, this is... Um, yeah, it's just Milton Keynes. Let's get a destination at Milton Keynes Central. We are good to go. Instrument lights on. I don't particularly enjoy driving the uh, the the 350 all that often, but uh, since it's been redone, I'll just swap over my handle to my T bar for this because that'll be quite nice. Right. We've got the road into forward. And then away we go. Headlights would have been nice out, wouldn't they? Oh. Always remember to install your branding packs, guys. I've just updated it so that I haven't reinstalled the branding packs, which was a bit stupid of me. So I do apologise. Right, so what's happened with AP recently? Well, uh, they've, that, Richard and Nick and Jordy even have been on the streams, uh, two streams in the past couple of weeks, in the past sort of month or so, uh, talking about things that they were wanting to do in the future, things they're not going to be doing in the future, and all that sort of jazz. I'm hoping to try and get them on for a video at one point, so we can do it as a video for you guys that don't watch the Twitch streams as well. But one of the things that came out from the Twitch streams was that they were wanting to upgrade certain features in some of their older packs. Now, this doesn't mean that every pack is going to be revisited. It, it just isn't possible um, for many, many reasons. One of the main reasons that uh, was being spoken about was some of the older models to implement something like the GSMR would be basically akin to a cab rebuild, which would then mean that it wouldn't be viable. Uh, sadly, but there are certain things that are getting updated and we're already seeing that out now. I have the list. Do I still have the list up here or did I get rid of it? I did have the list. I don't have the list now. Let me get the list back up because I seem to have closed it. If you go onto Armstrong Powerhouse's website, if you go down to the very bottom, there's a section that says information and inside there is an update log. It's always worth keeping your eye on that because that gives us a little bit of a idea of what's been changed. So if we went from, say, February, beginning of February, there has been 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 30 packs updated. And I've come around there way too fast. Uh, 30 packs updated since February, so it's well worth you guys going and 
uh, getting some of those newer packs that will we'll get those updates for those packs. Some of the big ones to sort of look out for. It tells you what's changed as well, so there's reason for update and things like that. So the 350, 450, blah 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 blah. That got GSMR, clickable TMS, and intelligent pantograph arcing added. So the same that's in the 325. Um, the 450 got the same. Uh, the Sky and Weather Enhancement Pack got a fog to mist and a mist to fog weather patterns added, which is nice because that was something we spoke about on stream was to have more weather patterns. So Rich has taken that on board and gone and added those in. Uh, Class 31 has had the power factor added. So that is the, the variable power factor. So it, within a percentage either way, power and break in power. This one's power. I don't know if it does break in the power. So sometimes the train will be less powerful than it would be driving another. So it means you'll very rarely drive a class 31 twice and it'd be exactly the same my driving's all over the place i do apologize i haven't driven in on train sim for about a week and um, that's not because i've wanted to take a break unfortunately my little boy has been um not very well so i haven't been home to be able to do it uh and that's why i've missed loads of new things that have come out as well but we're back on the ball now we're back on the ball so we're getting through there uh 365 Enhancement packs had the intelligent pantograph arcing added, so that was in the uh, again in the three two five packs. So that was that cool new uh, pantograph arcing feature that they put in for that. Uh, Thirty seven pack one and two has had power factor added. Three seven five and three seven seven has had the pantograph arcing. Fifty has had power factor added. Eighty six has had power factor and intelligent pantograph arcing added. Three one seven has had both. Uh, power and brake and motor factor and pantograph arc and added. Nice. So I'll take a look at that at some point as well. 319 has had the same as that. Uh, also some other minor improvements it says there as well. So that's quite cool. Uh, and that's in volume 1. Volume 2 is the same. 325 has had a voltage change reliability fix. Track enhancement pack. That also had a new track tingle EP. A track tingle sound added to it before. But it's also had the Berman Cross City Line support added. Um, 175 had passenger view fix sound fix the West Anglia Great Northern white livery was added to 313 the class 40 was fixed I will do a video on that as well um, as soon as I get a chance uh, 411412 has had some number corrections done and then lots of other little bits and pieces so there's been a fair amount to update and this is always my sort of thing when people say to me oh should I download and just instantly keep my copies of my AP stuff I have a backup of all my AP things that I download but more often than not I find myself having to re-download them anyway because there's been an update to them so what I tend to advise people to do is when you're reinstalling something from AP is download it directly at the time you're doing that reinstall uh, quite a lot of packs get updates that you wouldn't think of um, sometimes they're minor sometimes they're quite major so it's worth always keeping an eye out so yeah, AP have been listening to customer feedback and have implemented all of those changes so far. And that is the tip of the iceberg, really. There's more to come. There's more to come. So I'm really, really pleased with that. Really, really, really pleased with that. I've also got to... Why am I not... Oh, I wasn't clicked on the page, was I? <laughs> Sorry for the poor driving in this. Um, I've got to really bring up something that I brought up again in the uh, 323 video last time, was that we're now seeing a sort of release schedule from DTG that is akin to something we haven't seen for about four or five years. Um, and that's a fantastic thing to see. And the more we can keep the positive feedback going, guys, or the it doesn't have to be positive, the constructive feedback going to both DTG and to, say, ATS, to JT, to people like that, the more we can keep that up, the better these sort of releases are going to be. And AP being on the stream the other week was brilliant for them to get the feedback that they required to do the things that they wanted to do. And also for them to be able to explain why certain things don't happen or why certain things happen and other things don't. So that sort of relationship between um, developers and the community, I think, has become an awful lot stronger in the, in the, in the past sort of... I'd say past six months... So I'm really, really pleased to see that. We are eight cars, aren't we? Yeah. Really, really pleased to see that. So yeah, it's going well for us TS Classic fans. We're really sort of 
Ambassador is spoiling us, should I say. Oh, and we've got loads of stuff from Ray TS coming out soon enough that I'll be able to talk about soon enough as well. Which I cannot wait to do. As soon as I've got the go-ahead from everybody that everything's set and done and boxes are ticked and things are signed, you guys will know about it. Let's get me ding-dings. Wish I'd put my branding pack on. I wish I'd checked the exterior of the train before I started the video so that I knew that my branding pack wasn't on. But ah well, it happens. So to go with this, Buck Hampstead, Tring, Cheddington, Leighton Buzzard, Bletchley, and then Milton Keynes. So I'll read the blurb to you now. Good morning, driver. After suffering a compressor failure on the inbound journey, the leading unit, a decision was made to restart 2 kilo 2 one at Watford Junction, as opposed to the booked, of, booked of, off London Euston. Now roughly 10 minutes behind the schedule, you have since joined this service at Watford in charge of the duration for the post-peak journey to Milton Keynes. She'll run non-stop through to Hemel Hempstead before calling at all stations to Milton Keynes. Fortunately, we don't seem to have lost our path because of late running, but you can never be too cautious. Don't forget to alter your destination display before you set off. Well, we did that, actually. Where was this going to? Yeah, we're just going to Milton Keynes. That's fine. Oh, it's good to be back and driving. I'll tell you that for nothing. Looking forward to the stream tonight as well. It's uh, Monday the 29th of March, and uh, there will be a stream tonight. Since I think it's been a week since the last one. Well, it has been a week since the last one. I know it has. And I think now I'm not going to be waffling on too much. We can... Um, stick the DSD back on as well. So the moment my breaking point for Buckhamps is about the next signal. Just under a mile. We've been really lucky on the streams the past couple of weeks. We've had some, some really interesting people on as guests. Um, we had uh, Hayden, a guy who's a driver for Great Anglia on as well the other day. Uh, we've had various people, the Network Scott East guys. Um, we even had Albie of Super Alps fame who also has his own YouTube channel, uh, Super Alps Travels, which is becoming quite a popular uh, travel vlog at the minute, uh, talking about different ways to use all line rovers and explain the process of those as well. So it's been really interesting the past couple of weeks. So if you haven't popped along to some of the streams, do get yourself over. It's linked in the description below. Give it a follow. They're a bit ad hoc just at the minute. Um, of course, with everything being a bit up in the air, with all sorts of various other things, um, it's usually Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, it can sometimes be uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And it, it, it can chop and change. So it's worth giving that little follow button I hit and it'll give you a notification for when I do go live. I need to go to neutral. But it has, it's been good. I've really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. It's a really good crowd as well. Really, really good crowd. Very pleased with how it's worked out. Very pleased. And it's you guys that make it at the end of the day. It's not me that makes the streams. It's you guys that make the streams. So the more of you there are, and the, the, the more there is of you guys to listen and contribute, the better it goes. And I do apologise if you hear any external noises. 
it's because it is the Easter holidays and the kids are playing in the garden, so. There will be some background noise. But this is sort of, it's nice to have the GSMR working. It's, it's a feature that I think is a bit marmite. Some people love it and some people hate it. Uh, I, I enjoy having it here. I don't use it every time I drive. Um, I do it from streaming or videoing. But if I was playing by myself, would I set it up every single time? It depends on what I'm playing for. If I just want a quick run, then I'm not going to be that fast. If I want an immersive sort of run, then definitely I'm going to be putting it in. And being able to do the, the click spots on the TMS as well, I think, is is really, really nice. So you can do your full brake check and everything there. The door systems. I love the way it sort of has to think about it as well. I think if I remember rightly, 350s run on a version of Windows 3.1. Um, which is quite cool to know. And the way it's sort of like click, it's, it's, it's just got a bit about it. I will probably use it a lot more that I'm not doing it by the keyboard. Um, having it up there and having a little bit of a fiddle. I think scenario creators will probably make a little bit more use of it now that it's uh, controllable with the mouse. And the click spots is, is, is nice. And click spots, you're limited to how many how many things you can click in a cab. Uh, so it is actually when you when you're making trains within Train Simulator, there are, there is a finite amount of click spots, which can become a pain when you've got something like a, a complex TMS system. It's one of those little things. If you don't build stuff in Train Sim, you don't quite understand. And I still kind of understand it but don't really I've been to Tring but I've never been to Tring on the train that'd be a tongue twister I've been through Tring on the train. I've never been to Tring on a train, but I've been through Tring on the train. Yeah, that's that's what I was trying to say. I remember being quite pretty on the outskirts, if I remember rightly. Saying that, a lot of this sort of Hertfordshire, sort of Bedfordshire sort of way is relatively pretty. Apart from the cities themselves, really. You wouldn't really class Milton Keynes as pretty. Oh, well, depends if you're into sort of the architecture of, of, of Milton Keynes. You could, yeah. I quite like a bit of sort of 60s brutalism as well, but... Strangely... Still don't really like Milton Keynes. It's so one thing they did well. On the West Coast Man and South. One thing they did really well on the West Coast Man and South was the stations. They're decent. Should really try for a screenshot here, to be fair. Is that really the missus deciding to mow the grass as well? God help me. God help me. Welcome to family life, guys.
I'm not even going to argue with her, so we'll just have to put up with it for now. We'll put up with it. It'll be like a... You know, to be fair, my almost doesn't sound drastically different to the, the 350. Some may even say it might be a more appealing sound. Well, the 350s, I don't think, have a bad sound. It's a bit daft. I know it's not daft as in, well, it's because of the way the traction motors work and it's the way the power is there and it's GTO, blah, 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 blah. I understand all that. But from a, a, a railway enthusiast's point of view, or just from a mechanical engineering enthusiast's point of view, um, you can see why people call them UFOs. I always thought of it more like a car alarm. It's quite, well, quite weird. I don't know if you guys find this, but if it, people certainly of my age in their mid-30s and probably older will remember... I remember people's car alarms going off all the time as a kid because they were pretty rubbish at the time. And there'd always be that, that one bloke who had like a ropey Orion that was had a super-duper Thatcham car alarm that if you slightly went near it, it would go off. I remember there was a guy around our street who had a, a, an Audi... I don't remember what it was. Older Audi, and uh, if you if you lifted and and, uh, and he had a BMW that had the same alarm system. If you lifted the handle, like the door, like the car door handles, the alarm would go off. So you can imagine, as sort of eight nine year olds, how much fun we had with that. But I do remember car alarms going off all the time, and nowadays it's not not even. I don't don't hear it very often at all. I suppose it's because ultrasonic sensors and everything that have supposedly got much better. Oh, it was cars you used to walk beside, and they'd go off. Strange what some things make you think about. End up down a rabbit hole of 1990s car alarms. There you go. We've got Cheddington. Cheddington, quite the one that's quite popular with train spotters. I think I've seen quite a few videos of people at Cheddington. I think if that's the one I'm thinking of. It's kind of quite open all around it. We'll see in a second when we get there. Was it Cheddington then, Milton Keynes? Uh, Cheddington, Leighton, Buzzard, Bletchley, Milton Keynes. Nice little motor service there. I was actually doing some work out in Ely uh, Wednesday. Ely, when, Ely Wednesday, London Thursday. Um, for projects you should hear about soon. Um, and uh, spent a good bit of time actually in and around Ely for, for the first time I've done it in a long time. And the amount of traffic that was going through is unreal. Unreal amount of uh, intermodal traffic, passenger traffic. It was it was pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. I always forget how good Ely is for spotting. Um, not that I was there in a spotting capacity. But it was good to see everything come past. I was up at Peterborough on the Wednesday part of the Ely bit as well. Um... And I saw the is it NWT 66, and then I saw the Biffa 66. Um, loads of the different Freightliner versions. Saw the ROG 37 a couple of times. So that actually going down the Breckland line at one point. Um, what did we see? Saw an 88 at Norwich when we were on the way down to London. So yeah, some cool things we saw the other day. But unfortunately, it meant I had to go to London, and I don't really like London. And just let you know, this was all business. This was not uh, leisure travel. 
why somebody would choose to go to London on, in leisure time, I don't know. Um, but it wasn't leisure travel. That's not fair, really. There's some wonderful parts of London. There's some wonderful things to do in London. It's good pubs, basically. Uh, but it wouldn't be my first choice of destination. I can tell you that for nothing. But got to do another nice trip on... Uh, well, my first proper trip on a 745. Uh, I've done between Ipswich and uh, Ipswich and Norwich on a 745 uh, about September time. But last uh, this time I got to do Norwich to London and return, which was actually really nice. Lovely, lovely bits of kit. And the one we had going uh, we're up, so down to London, but up to London was not the not the quietest thing in the world. I think it was either the gangway rubbers sort of rubbing at an awkward angle, or it's the, the big side dampers, the big lateral dampers they've got. Um, one of them was a bit noisy, I won't lie. Something was quite noisy. But apart from that, they're cracking bits of kit. We had a pretty, um, what's the best way to describe it? Efficient uh, revenue protection inspector as well uh, at Norwich. Because we got off the the EMR service from Ely and then just walked straight round and got on our train because we were on tight times anyway and got on our train going down to London. And uh, as we got on the 745, this guy had walked down the... Because we were, we were in first class. We were right at the opposite end of the platform at uh, Norwich. So fair old walk. And this guy had sort of... I'd clocked him as we'd walked straight round. And he followed us all the way down. Didn't check anybody else's tickets. We went and sat and sat down. And as soon as we sat down, he then stepped on the train, came through and was like, right, uh, I need to see your tickets. So we got the tickets, showed him the tickets. And he was happy with them. And then he, I think he was a bit gutted we actually had first class tickets. And then he was like, uh, and I need to see the tickets from your, your previous journey as well. I was like, yeah. I said, um, yeah, no problem. Where, where, where did you come from? Uh, Ely, mate. Oh, well, show me your tickets from there, please. So, oh, mate, no worries. There you go. I don't, I don't think he was very happy. I think he wanted to catch us out with something. He seemed a bit miffed. And the fact that he didn't check anybody else on that train at all, apart from us, was a bit... Um, yeah. And we did look, to be fair, me and Pete did look quite scruffy and we were carrying half a ton of equipment with us, so it, I, I can understand why we looked a bit weird. Just felt a bit, a bit singled out when they're the only people that were checked. You kind of think, all right. Do your years of experience show that people with beards and backpacks generally don't have tickets or something? It was a bit odd. But he was doing his job. He was doing his job. And that's all that matters. Oh, it's further down. Sorry, passengers, that was a bonky stop. I do apologise. Hang 
on, did I stop at Cheddington? I was like, yeah, I did. I was too busy waffling on to check if it was where I thought it was or not. <laughs> One of those. Got a lot to catch up with, an awful lot to catch up with. We've got the new 323 sound pack to take a look at. That will be the video after this, I think. Um, and a few of the other packs from uh, from Arsenal Powers that have been updated I want to take a look at as well. So it should be a busy week. I don't know how much exactly how much time I'm going to get to record this week, but I'm hopefully going to get enough to get a video-ish a day out. Ah, oh, it's 2.20 stop and 3.90s. I was like, oh, hang on a second. It's like the first, it's like, it's, it's, it's got to be a good 18, 19 degrees outside. So sorry, I've heard the lawnmower start again. I do apologise. But what this now means will be that the wife will have cut the grass and it will be that I will need to move something or lay patio slabs or some... Just want to, you know, do something small in the garden. What is you want done, darling? Well, I think we could just re-turf it all. Oh, all right, yeah. Just just want a, a, a new rock feature there. It'd be one of those sorts of next couple of weeks. I can feel it coming every start of every summer start of every summer. Oh, it looks like I've got a bun in my hair. I don't. Ah, hairdresser soon. Looking forward to that. And I'm not a fan of getting my hair cut, so I don't know. It's probably the first time I've ever said looking forward to getting my hair cut. I hate the hairdressers like people hate the dentist. It just annoys me. And my barber's pretty good as well. Doesn't do too much chatting. It's one of the positives about going a bit bald. Because I might not need a hairdresser soon enough. So I think a lot of people will be getting a bit more use out of the uh, the 350 with the with this update and the uh, power brake controller being out for well 50 odd of you have got the power brake controller. That should really make a big difference to driving things like this. Not that I've got my eye on the ball eye on the ball for it at the moment. So it's weird. Do you guys get that? If you have a couple of day, like a little while off, I mean I have to do training quite often, but if you guys have a couple of days where you don't do it. Do you feel like it's like you have to sort of get your eye back in? It takes me a couple of runs to be back used to things. It's like my old job when you were if you were off sick for like a couple of days or whatever, you'd go in and you felt like you hadn't been there for about a month. Feels a bit like that.
So it's still got the Southwest train stuff in because James Ivel's patch that he did for this, um, I think needs redoing for the updated version. So I think he will be working on that. If he pro probably has done it already, knowing him. That gives you things like the green seat and gets rid of the SWT stuff. Came a bit fast there. Wasn't concentrating. Yeah, I don't dislike driving the 350. I think people always moan at me. On, uh, people know on stream that I, 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 I dislike... Sounds stupid, doesn't it? I didn't dislike the 350 because I don't like the way it drives or anything like that. It was because when this pack came out, I felt like I drove it constantly for about two months. But now I've had a good break from it. It's an enjoyable drive. And this scenario is nice as well. Good AI. Nice run. That's us now, isn't it? Milton Keynes after this. So this is one of, like I said earlier, one of Mr. Dreamliners. He's part of the WTT, so working timetable scenario pack, guys. This is a free one, obviously. Uh, but they're uh, very rarely a bad scenario from that lot, to be honest with you. Very, very rarely. And the quality level of scenarios at the moment is going up. Is going up. There's a few... There's, a, there's sort of a mix. I think because we've seen a, a massive influx again of people coming over from... Not necessarily from things like TSW2, but people coming into Train Sim. Um, we've noticed activity being a lot higher recently with Train Sim Classic. I don't know if it's people coming back into it because there's new content or people that have been liking TSW that want to now see what Train Sim is like. But there is definitely a, a much higher amount of people being involved in Train Sim Classic at this precise moment in time, which is really good to see. But it also brings about a few a few niggles here and there with some people. So sometimes there's been sort of really good sounding scenarios that people have gone into and then it's just a bit lacklustre or people have missed out loads of AI or things like that and it's going to take a while again for people to get sort of skilled up and trained up and for those of you that are interested in doing scenarios there's some great videos on youtube by matt peddleson about to do it all but also over on acs the freeware is um uh one of the a guy that's very prevalent of scenario creator on uh, acs it's a guy called cranky bot um he's done a scenario making guide that tells you sort of ins and outs of little niggles that he learned when he was making them uh, it's well worth a read if, if, if you want to start doing your own scenarios. So look at all different sources. Uh, Matt P's videos, CrankyBot Scenario Guide is, is, is very decent. It's worth doing. And then you sort of get a feel for what, what the general sort of gist of things are. And whilst there's quite a lot of new players, what there is also a bit of a drive for at the moment is um, scenarios using more default stock. Now, I'm going to be honest, I don't, I don't buy into that idea. Um, the reason I don't buy into that idea is that we shouldn't lower the general quality of the stuff that's already been going on for Train Sim because people haven't got the requirements for it that have come in new. Um, there's plenty of DTG sales, there's plenty of uh, JT sales, AP do a few a year. And I appreciate that money is an issue for a lot for a lot of people, and I, I do get that. But you already have Steam Workshop that's got thousands of scenarios on it. Um, I think when you're going into the third party realm of scenarios, it, it, it is sort of, to use a railway term, a step change in the level of detail you're sort of looking for. 
and I think to lessen the general quality of things to make it more accessible has its benefits but it also it, it definitely has its as its downfalls as well it's just tricky it's not what I particularly stand by I've, I've always wanted to be pushing TS to its limits um, not 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 going backwards with it really workshops always been more than capable of doing that for you So if you are looking for stuff with a lot of default stuff, learn how to use TS tools. So you might have one or two AP packs and a lot of default packs. My advice would be get your scenarios off workshop and swap in your AP stuff with TS tools. Um, that would be my advice. That will also give you a better understanding of how the sim works as well. And if you just want to plug and play it, just do the default stuff. I just realise my camera has decided it's on autofocus mode again, which it shouldn't be. So if this blurred at any point during the... If I do that or do that, it'll go... Meep, 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 meep. I do apologise. Oh, I've got little stock car markers in the, in the six foot. I like that. Still going to miss it. Too busy enjoying them, really. <laughs> right, you into neutral. Doors open. DRA set. Into off. Key off. Right. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Head on over to alanthompsonsim.com for your latest and greatest train sim needs. Join us over on Twitch. As I said at the moment, it tends to be Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, but that can change. But if you hit that follow button on Twitch, it will mean that you can get notifications of when I go live as well so you won't miss them unless you're doing something at the time but if you join over the Facebook group you'll get usually a weekly update of what my streaming days are for the week a nice post peak run that these units will now be locked out of use and will go ECS Northampton to split and stable before lunchtime departures respectively scenario complete all right and guys so once again thanks ever so much catch us next time